let's go ahead and create our database for our one-to-one -one database relationship example. First, we'll start with the table business entity. This table will have business entity ID as an integer identity field marked as the primary key and created date and modified date with some default values. Every business entity will have a new ID automatically generated by SQL Server. Next, let's go ahead and create a person table. Every person will also be represented by one in exactly one business entity record. We can achieve this by having the primary key field of person be business entity ID with a foreign key reference pointing to business entity. Make sure that the primary key table is business entity. Let's add a few extra fields to person. This structure ensures that every person is a business entity. It allows us to split off information between different tables. Next, let's add one more table called employee. While every employee is a business entity, they're also a person. So we will want to create a foreign key reference to person tables business entity ID column. Make sure that the primary key table in this situation is person. Finally, every employee will have a job title. Go ahead and save the diagram. Let's go ahead and create an application using Code on Time App Generator. Let's give this project the name one to one. And let's connect to our database. Let's add some data models for our business. Let's add some data models for our database entities, starting with business entity. There's not much to see here. It's a simple table. This data model will contain all three fields from the business entity table. Next, let's create a data model for person. Notice that the business entity ID, the foreign primary key, points to business entity. We've picked up all fields from the business entity table, excluding the primary key. These fields are marked as writable and borrowed. When the field list is built, first the primary key field is included. Any borrowed fields will be included after the primary key field from the parent relationship, and then any extra fields included onto the current table will be listed underneath. Let's go ahead and save our data model. And let's create one for employee. Notice that a similar structure has taken place. The business entity ID field is included first. It's traversed down to the bottom most 
relationship and picked up created date and modified date. And then it's taken the fields from person, first, middle, and last. Finally, we have the job title field. This will likely be the correct structure that we would like our users to enter data. Go ahead and save the model. And let's see this in action. Let's take a look at the business entity page. And let's create a new record. We now have one database record under the business entity table. Next, let's create one for person. We've created a record under the person table. If we jump over to business entity, we can see that there is a corresponding record made under the business entity table as well. Due to the presence of a record that is using the record as a foreign key, we'll be unable to delete this record. Finally, let's try creating an employee. Notice that there is one employee record visible under the employee page. Under the person page, we can see that Julie Rogers is also a person. We can see that there are three business entities in our database. Note that operations on one-to-one -one controllers are wrapped in a database transaction. Each level of one-to-one -one relationship is explored and the relevant create, update, or delete query is executed. Any relevant business rules are executed as well. Should an error occur on any level, the entire transaction is rolled back and your database is unchanged. Let's validate the data that we have in our database. You can notice that we have the corresponding three business entities two person records, and one employee record. We can see that the four and primary keys link them all together successfully. So how does this process work? The model builder has automatically created the correct configuration for our one-to-one -one relationships to work correctly. Let's take a look at this configuration in the project designer. Under the Employee Controller, let's select the Business Entity ID field. Notice that it's using a new item style, one-to-one. -one. The field is pointing to the Person Controller, with Business Entity ID on the Person Controller as the Data Value field. The Copy property contains a reverse map of fields that will be written back at the time of record creation or update. We can see a similar structure on the person business entity ID field. The business entity controller is independent of all these one-to-one -one relationships. There is no special configuration needed for business entity controller to work. One-to-one -one relationships are a great tool to use when designing your database and are supported natively by Code on Time, Web Application Generator.